And it's time for some MOSFET amplifiers. Last time we looked at MOSFET construction and some biasing. Right? We noticed there were two types. You had a depletion enhancement, and then we had an enhancement only. So what I want to do here is look at some amplifiers, some AC cases, one for the DE and one for the E, things that we wouldn't be able to do with a JFET. Remember, the DE MOSFET, you can think of like a superset of a JFET. Everything that the um, JFET could do, the MOSFET can do. So you can do a, a self-bias, you can do a fixed gate bias, right? Yeah, you can do a current source bias. All of those things will work. Remember, the underlying equations all work out the same. The difference really is it extends, that transconductance curve extends into the first quadrant, and that allows this thing to be biased in a couple of different ways. All right? So we're going to look at one of those, and as mentioned last time, the AC model winds up being identical for both of these compared to the JFET. We have a voltage-controlled current source in both cases. So all of the equations we came up with for things like uh, voltage gain, right, common drain, common source, whatever, those would be identical here, same sorts of calculations, inspection techniques, and so forth for output impedance, input impedance, those don't change. So we just want to illustrate a couple of ones here that we couldn't do with JFETs, all right? So I'm going to start off with a depletion enhancement MOSFET, and this has uh, an interesting sort of bias that we call a zero bias, right? We mentioned that briefly last time. This is really just a, a variation, a form of, of a fixed gate bias. It's kind of nice because it's, it's uh, minimal parts and it's actually pretty easy to compute. So we'll just run down here through a drain resistor into our FET. We forego any resistance in the source. So this is never going to be a swapped amplifier. Run this out to our signal generator. And we'll have a little bias resistor back here. So let's say this is so oh, 50 meg. Um, biasing resistor up top, we'll make that a K. 25 volts. Run this out to a load. A couple of K ohms. Now let's say that the IDSS for this particular FET is 15 milliamps and the VGS, oops, VGS off is negative 2.5 volts. So let's do the bias first, right? Figure out the GM, then we can calculate the uh, gain and so forth. All right, because it's zero bias, we know it's zero bias. Source is at ground, right? There is no voltage applied, no DC voltage applied to the gate. So VGS here is zero, right? That's how we know it's zero bias. That's pretty much the definition of it. If that's the case, then ID must equal IDSS, because that's the definition, and GM must equal GM zero. Because right? those are defined at VGS equals zero. So let's figure out what the GM0 is, right? That's, again, negative 2 IDSS over VGS off. And that's going to work out to a negative 2 times 15 mils divided by the VGS off of negative 2 and a half. Okay, so that's going to work out to 12 millisiemens. All right. That will produce a 12 volt drop across the 1K. 25 volt source means the drain voltage would be 12. Um, oh, I'm sorry. 15, mil, 15 milliamps uh, times the 1K would be 15 volts. 15 from the 25 would get us 10. Sorry about that. Uh, but the GM, uh, we know, is going to be GM0. We know that's 12 millisiemens. So we can now figure out what the gain on this is going to be. 
no swapping. So that's going to be a negative GM times RL or RD, whichever you want to call it. That's going to be 12 millisiemens. Now, what is the load? Well, that's 1K in parallel with 2K, right? 2 to 1 ratio. So it's going to be 2 thirds of the 1K, which is 667 ohms. Okie doke. So put that in here. And your voltage gain is going to work out to basically 2 thirds of 12, which is 8. And it's inverting, as expected. In other words, um, input phase like this, output phase like that. What do we have for an input impedance? Now that's easy. Now you look into this, you see the 50 meg in parallel with Z into the gate, which is virtually infinity, and certainly at DC low frequencies. So that's basically 50 meg. Done. If you want to find the Z out, we would sit back here and look in this way, and that would just be 1K. There's your amplifier. All right. Fairly straightforward solution. All right, EMOS. Now remember the EMOS, this has a uh, first quadrant operation, kind of like a bipolar transistor does. So we have to put on a positive voltage on the gate right, if we were to uh, ground the source. Right? So in other words, if we did something along, let's say, this line, I ground the source over here, I could do something like, uh, like a voltage divider. All right. And I'll just throw my signal in back here. And then I'll have a load out like there. Okay. So the FET itself might have an operational curve that looks something like this. So this is, of course, your VGS. Here's your ID. And then we get something. It goes like yay. All right, let's say that that threshold voltage is one volt, and if we put in five volts, we get 50 milliamps. All right, so that's our characteristic curve. So I have an ID on and a VGS on. Values for our circuit over here, let's put in a 30 volt power supply. We'll say the biasing resistor is a couple of K. Our load is maybe 10 K. And then the biasing resistor is back here. These are going to be very large values. Remember, your gate current is infinitesimal. So I'm going to go with a, um, a 90 meg and a 10 meg for those two. All right, so I'll have a nice 10% value out here. So I can figure out immediately what is my gate voltage. Simple voltage divider, 30 volts times 10 meg over 10 meg plus 90 meg. And that's going to get us 3 volts. So we are going to be operating, you know, like out here somewhere. All right, there's our 3 volts, and whatever that is. Okay. All right, so how do I figure that out? How do I figure out that specific value? Well, remember we have an equation for ID for the EMOS, and that current is equal to K, which is a factor, kind of like, you know, beta on a bipolar, um, depending on the, on the construction of the device, K times VGS minus VGS threshold quantity squared. So what we're going to do is, since we have this known operation point, right, this, this ID on and this VGS on, I can use those to find the value of K for this particular FET. Once I know K, um, I can find, you know, the, the drain current for any other value of VGS. All right, so I just solve this in terms of K. Oops. So K is going to equal ID 
divided by that quantity. And then we just plug the numbers in. All right, so the on current that we have is 50 mils. Uh, the VGS value <clears throat> we have is, is uh, 5 volts. Threshold was 1 volt. Square that up. And your K is going to equal 3.125. Um, you can call that millisiemens per volt or milliamps squared per volt. Whichever one works for you. All right. So now I know the K value. I can turn around and plug in this equation uh, for my 3 volts. So ID is going to be K 3.125. times my VGS, which is 3 volts, minus the threshold of 1 volt, quantity squared. And ID works out to 12.5 milliamps. All right, 12.5 milliamps through the 2K would give us 25 volts. So with 30 volts supply, we'd have 5 volts sitting across the FET. Okay, so far so good. Now I need to find the GM value. And we discovered last time that um, if we just took the derivative of this, we could find GM, which turns out to 2K times VGS minus VGS threshold. So I'll just plug my values in here and see what we get. So K is 3.125 millisiemens per volt. And we have a VGS over here of 3 volts, a threshold of 1 volt, and our GM will work out to 12.5 millisiemens. Now, it's just a coincidence that we have the same digits here that we have here. All right, don't let, don't let that turn into some kind of, uh, you know, fake importance. That's just a coincidence. All right, so I know the GM now. What's the gain equation for this? Well, this is just a normal common source amplifier. There is no resistor down in the source, so this thing is a, a non-swamped, in other words, GMRL form. So we've got 12.5 millisiemens. What is the value of RL? RL would be 2K in parallel with 10K. What is that? That's 1.667K ohms. All right, oops, forgot the minus sign in there. So what is our gain? Grind, grinding this out, it's 20.8. Inverting gain of 20.8. All right, um, what else might we be interested in? Well, the output impedance, looking back from here, that's going to be 2K ohms. What about the ZN? Well, you're sitting out here and you're, you know, you pretend you're the generator. You look in, what do you see? Well, you see 90 meg parallel with 10 meg and parallel with the ZN gate. And again, the ZN gate is, you know, through the roof. So we put 90 in parallel with 10 and you get a 9 mega ohm input impedance. Okay? And that covers pretty much everything. And we're done.